So I have the uh, distinct privilege of uh, speaking right before lunch, so thank you for sticking around. <laughs> um, uh, thanks for the introduction. So my name is Nicholas Christian. I'd like this to be in full screen. Um, uh, so I'm here to talk to you about uh, MLDB, which is the machine learning database, which is a new uh, open source uh, package which we've released. Um, so I'm not here to sell you anything. I do work for a company, but this is open source, so I hope uh, I, I hope you'll forgive me. Um, so very briefly about Datacratic, um, we're a Montreal software company. We specialize in machine learning, and for the past six years, uh, we've been solving web scale problems using machine learning. So we do lookalike modeling. We power the lookalike models for the Oracle Data Cloud. Um, we we ingest uh, trillions of data points per month. We do billions of predictions per day. Uh, we do content recommendation, or we sell content recommendation technology. Uh, we do online advertising optimization, so we have uh, products for real-time bidding. Uh, and we do web form moderation, so we uh, provide technology for uh, natural language processing and uh, text classification. And we have built an open source uh, technology stack called MLDB, which is the Machine Learning Database. So uh, you can check out our website right there. And uh, these slides are available here. So. Uh, Anybody taking pictures of every slide uh, doesn't have to do that. You can just take pictures of that one. <laughs> um, and I'm recording this, uh, my screen and stuff, so um, this video will be available online as well. So you can just sit back and enjoy. Um, so uh, one of the reviews uh, from, uh, from when we submitted this paper basically said, you know, why a new machine learning system? Why a database? Um, so the needs that we had at Datacratic uh, was that we needed to train predictive models on web scale data sets. So uh, billions of users, trillions of inputs. Um, we needed those models available as REST endpoints very quickly so that they could be queried uh, by, uh, you know, web technologies, but by browsers as REST APIs. Uh, we would like to, you know, we wanted to avoid uh, the costs and performance hits of uh, running a cluster. So Hadoop, uh, now Spark, these technologies uh, are very powerful, but uh, there's, a, there's a vast amount of overhead and waste uh, between, you know, the various uh, cluster components talking to each other. Uh, and, you know, if you can run something on one node, it's at least you know, an integer multiple cheaper than running it on end nodes. So <laughs> we wanted to avoid running a cluster if we could. Um, we needed a data manipulation paradigm that's easy to learn and easy to use. Uh, and then you know, while we were making a nice wish list of things that we wanted, we wanted a single system to do all of this. We didn't want a patchwork of systems. We didn't want a training system over here, a deployment system over there, a data ingestion over system over here, a visualization system over there. We wanted one system. So what we came up with um, is uh, MLDB, the Machine Learning Database. So it's a new SQL database. People ask me this all the time. Did you guys really write a database? Yes, we did. There's a, there's a Dilbert cartoon about this. Um, so we wrote it from scratch uh, in C++. We have uh, from scratch implementations of machine learning algorithms and uh, SQL select statements. Um, and the key design consideration was machine learning. So uh, we did not optimize MLDB to do uh, analytic queries like count group by. We optimized it for uh, feature generation uh, feature generation and, and machine learning evaluation. So it's open source under an Apache 2 license. Uh, all the sources here on GitHub. Uh, I encourage you to check it out. Um, and you know, anything which I say here, you can go inspect to see whether I'm, whether I'm uh, making it up or not. Um, so it, uh, MLDB is web native, so we were pretty excited to be accepted uh, at, the, at the, you know, the big data for the web uh, uh, talk. Um, its primary API is a JSON over REST over HTTP. So it's not a binary API. You can talk directly to MLDB from the browser if you want. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, as I mentioned, it's an end-to-end -end solution, so it, it uh, handles data intake, model training, and model deployment, either on one node or multiple nodes running the same software package. So it's kind of an integrated, uh, integrated solution. Um, this is the Big Data Innovators Gathering, so I would be in trouble if, uh, if I didn't, uh, didn't think it was sort of big data ready. Uh, we, we train models on billions of data points. We do this every day uh, on cloud hardware that we, that we rent for about a dollar an hour. Um, which is very important for us because it's very cost effective, right? Our, our goal was to, to train very, very quickly uh, on a single node, if at all possible, so as to avoid the need for a, for a cluster. And speed is very important to us uh, because agility in data science is very important, right? There's, there's the hardware cost, but then there's also the sort of wetware cost of uh, paying for your data scientists. So if you're paying for them to sit around waiting for training to finish, you're not doing a good job. So um, the other question after... Uh, did you guys really build a, a SQL database <laughs> that I get is sort of what the heck is a machine learning database? So this is kind of the type of query you get uh, from, a, from a traditional database, right? Select the browsing reports from the web, web logs. I mean, most people don't store web logs in, in SQL stores, but this is conceptually what's going on, right? You're basically uh, asking about summations on the past um, from, from web log data. 
similar to the previous presentation. Um, what a machine learning database uh, would allow you to do is essentially select the future, right? Select content recommendation from web logs. Um, so this is essentially the use case that, that the gentleman from Outbrain was talking about. Um, given some, some browsing data, uh, don't tell me what was browsed, tell me what's likely to be browsed so I can make content recommendations. So this is conceptually the kind of queries we're, we're, we're trying to answer. And in fact, you can actually run uh, a SQL query almost exactly like this. And I'll show you how in a second. Um, and then even better, if you have access to such a function, why don't you just uh, query it directly from REST, right? Skip the, skip the select piece. You know you want to do a content recommendation. Your input is a, is a URL, so your user is on this particular uh, website right now. What content do you recommend for him or her? So um, a lot of these details are, are in the sort of two-pager and on our website, but the data model uh, for MLDB, which is kind of part of the core of, of uh, how it can be so efficient, um, in, in terms of buzzwords, it's an append-only schema-free relational database model. So it's append-only, you can stick data in. Um, excuse me. You can't delete it, you can't mutate it, it's just recording things that are happening. And that allows you uh, to do all sorts of, or allows us anyway, to do all sorts of, um, of optimizations because you don't have to kind of worry about having to edit the data. Um, schema-free, you don't have to declare the schema up front. Um, and relational basically fits into the, the model you tend to think about, right, rows and columns. So the twist is that we are representing data uh, within MLDB as a 3D sparse matrix. So the rows and columns, just like in any other, any other systems, uh, but the intersection of a row and a column, which is a cell, you can store multiple time-stamped values. So this is not unique, other people do this, but uh, this is the data model that we've chosen. And it turns out that, that this particular way of looking at data is ideal for machine learning on web browsing data and other kinds of, of data sets. So let me give you an example. If you model your users as rows, and your URLs as columns, then you have essentially a 3D sparse matrix, right? User Nicholas visited site lapresse.ca yesterday and this morning. <laughs> so essentially, uh, each row contains multiple time timestamp values. It's important, uh, as you see here, for the, for the system to be schema-free because you don't want to enumerate all, enumerate all of the URLs in the world up front when you, when you do your create table, right? Um, so MLDB supports uh, millions, of, millions of columns, millions of rows. Uh, the rows are named, the columns are named, which means you can operate on the transpose uh, of, of the rows and the columns sort of trivially, which is kind of neat. So everything is sort of doubly indexed. Um, if you want to do something other than content recommendation, which is kind of my running example here, um, if your rows are users and your columns are items, items which were purchased, items which were browsed, items which were uh, rated, you can do any kind of recommendation. <laughs> Actually, you can, you can basically do a purchase recommendation, Netflix recommendations. Um, if your rows are products and your columns are words and textual descriptions, you can do product-to-product uh, -product recommendation without even looking at behavioral data, right? You can just do it based on textual descriptions. And we use this to solve cold start problems. When we don't have enough user data, we essentially fall back to uh, description, description level data. Uh, and if your rows are content items, then you can just do pure uh, content recommendations, either based on uh, the actual words within the contents uh, of the content, um, <laughs> or, uh, or tags. If you have uh, um, a website like Stack Overflow, there are questions, questions have tags. You can do sort of tag similarity uh, in using the sort of matrix math that was described in one of the earlier talks, rather than uh, treating things as a graph problem. So this is the, the underlying data model. Uh, and then within MLDB, uh, because we essentially reuse the labels from the rows and the columns, we're able to store uh, individual data points, which is an individual value within a cell, in as little as two bytes, which allows us to store billions of data points in memory uh, on readily available hardware. So on Amazon, you can rent access to what's called an R3 8x large instance, 244 gigabytes of RAM, for under a dollar an hour, uh, if, you, if you rent it on the, on the spot market. So uh, you know, you can train very, very, very large models for almost no money. Um, so, you know, MLDB, how do we map machine learning to SQL concepts? So, first of all, MLDB supports a standard SQL select statement with a few extensions for millions of columns in the time dimension. Um, uh, there are other sort of database extensions for doing machine learning. A lot of them kind of add new keywords like predict or kind of uh, there, there's a system called Madlib, which kind of abuses the select statement a little bit and you have sort of select, do the model training, and kind of waits. Uh, MLDB does it a little bit differently. We've tried to map things as natively as possible into the database uh, world. So 
any kind of batch job, like a model training is a stored procedure, uh, and any kind of sort of quick row level uh, evaluation is a user defined function. So this little flowchart here kind of shows you the basic flow. Um, if you have some sort of data file or continuous stream of data that's mapped onto a data set, we don't call them tables because they're 3D sparse matrices. Um, if you want to run a batch training procedure, you can do that. That'll give rise to a model file, which can then be diffused out to a scoring layer if you want, uh, or used locally to do scoring. That gives rise to a user-defined function, like content recommendation that I showed you earlier, and that's immediately available for subsequent uh, SQL queries and immediately available on that node as a REST endpoint. So you can stream data into an MLDB node, run a training procedure, and five milliseconds later, as soon as it's done, uh, query your predictor in real time on a REST API. Um, we've essentially tried to map as much of the SQL primitives onto HTTP as possible in order to keep the entirety of our API an HTTP REST API. So um, I kind of showed this in, in the paper, but you know, there's various SQL commands in the data definition language and the data manipulation language. Uh, create, drop, insert, delete. Everyone knows these who has worked with SQL. Um, we basically mapped them fairly straightforwardly onto HTTP verbs. So if you want to create a, a data set or you want to create and run a procedure, that's an HTTP put. If you want to delete something, uh, we can drop entire data sets, although we can't delete individual rows. That's delete. Insertion, so row level insertion is HTTP post, as you would expect, and any kind of query, whether it be a model evaluation or a select query, is an HTTP get. So what do we get for that? Well, this is basically model training over HTTP. Put slash v1 slash procedures slash, let's call this uh, train recommender, and your hyperparameters for your training, um, your training procedure are just JSON payload after that. As soon as that's done, you can uh, apply the model you've just trained if your hyperparameter specified that you wanted to create a function called content recommendation. You can apply that in batch, select content recommendation from web logs, and that'll run, the, run and, uh, and evaluate all your, uh, all your rows in batch. Or you can access that in REST immediately with get slash v1 slash functions. Um, we benchmarked it on an R3 8x large at approximately 10,000 requests per second on a single node with five millisecond response times, excluding network, for about a dollar an hour. So, so far we're meeting all of our, uh, all of our goals in terms of, you know, end-to-endedness, uh, cost efficiency, and scalability. Um, so, you know, how does this stack up in terms of, in terms of speed <laughs> compared to some of the existing systems? One of the, uh, one of the other questions that we got from, from some of the reviewers. So, um, when we released MLDB uh, last year, someone on Twitter said, hey, you know, I'm building a, a, a data set of benchmarks of uh, machine learning tools, and I think the absolute minimum benchmark for a machine learning tool is running a random forest on a million uh, records. You know, a lot of data problems are less than a million records, a lot are much more, but that seems like a, a reasonable benchmark. So uh, he's basically been collecting a bunch of data uh, from different uh, open source and commercial tools. Uh, so on a single R38X large, um, which is a 32 core machine, it's, it's generically available on Amazon, you can train 100 tree random forests in MLDB in 18 seconds. Uh, Spark MLLib does it in 250. Scikit-learn, very pop, uh, popular Python library, does it in 200. H2O, another distributed system, 130. Uh, and then XGBoost, which is a specialized library that does only this, uh, does it in about, uh, in about 30 seconds. So we're basically 10 times faster, uh, give or take, than, than some of the most popular uh, open source products, projects out there. So, so why is this? Well, Spark and H2O, uh, you could argue this is not a very fair comparison to them because they're essentially designed as distributed systems. So when you run them on a single node, um, you're, not, you're not really using them uh, to, to the best effect. But on, you know, 1 million to 100 million record training jobs, do you need a cluster? Do you want to pay for 10 machines when you can do it on one? This is kind of the, you know, there's big data and then there's big return on investment, right? If you need, if, or if, if you don't need a 10 machine cluster but you're using one, you're essentially throwing nine tenths of your money away. Um, so I'm not saying that MLDB, you know, is the, the be all end all for all big data machine learning, but for many real world size problems, uh, you can, you can run it very, very fast on a single node as compared to some distributed systems. So, um, this is my job. I could, I could go on all day about MLDB. Um, th there's a bunch of stuff that doesn't fit into a 15 minute talk, so I'll just hit the highlights and then you can come talk to me after. Um, we don't just do random forests, obviously. We're aiming to be a, a general purpose machine learning system. So we have very high performance, scalable implementations of singular value decompositions, which allow you to transform large sparse matrices into somewhat less large <laughs> dense matrices. 
and TSNI for visualizations. So um, these benchmark very, uh, very favorably against uh, MLLib and scikit-learn. Uh, we have TensorFlow, word to vec and Senti WordNet integration for model execution. So we can delegate the training uh, to those, but you can essentially uh, use the same infrastructure to evaluate TensorFlow graphs. Um, we sort of try to hit all the buzzwords. Uh, you know, you can do uh, deploy it using Docker. It comes with an onboard uh, Jupyter installation for data science in the browser. Um, we've worked very, very hard at making data importation fast. You can import data directly from S3 at about 4 million lines per second if you have it in a CSV format. And uh, the way we compress data, you can store the data in memory in less space than it takes to store the commas on disk in your CSV. Uh, so, you know, you can use it in streaming, but it's extremely efficient in batch. Uh, we have a, a very fancy explain feature to explain what an ensemble of models is doing. So it's very easy to inspect, you know, a single decision tree or a single generalized linear model uh, by just looking at the weights or looking at the splits. But when you have an ensemble, we've done boosting or bagging. It's much more difficult to understand uh, just by inspection what a model is doing. So we have features for that. And then we've done some uh, pretty fancy uh, gymnastics around the SQL select statements to uh, enable it to query the time dimension, which is the third dimension in our sparse matrix. So... In conclusions, um, MLDB is the machine learning database. It's open source. Uh, I, I really strongly encourage you to try it out. It's available on GitHub. Um, it's, it's ideal for cost effectively addressing web scale prediction use cases. This is what we do. Uh, this is what we would like to help you do, I guess. Um, you can try the demos right now. Uh, it takes about 45 minutes to compile on a 32 core machine, just because it's pretty heavy. Uh, but we have essentially instances running. So you just go to MLDB.ai, you don't have to pay anything. Clickety-click, uh, and you can, be, you can be playing with it right now in 30 seconds. Uh, please feel free to send any inquiries or feedback to me, mldb.datacrag.com, um, or just come find me. I'm around. I'm wearing my fancy suit because I'm excited about this talk. Um, and I love talking about MLDB. Um, so thanks very much.